So the first thing that you're gonna need is a deer hide. <laughs> so that may seem pretty obvious, but there's lots of different ways to get a deer hide. So one way is that you shoot a deer. And then after you shoot the deer, you skin the deer. When you skin the deer, it's really important that you pull the hide off of the deer and that you skin it in a way that you slit the belly and you slit up the arms, but you leave the back and the majority of the hide intact. I've seen hunters <laughs> like whack off a whole leg and then with the skin and everything. And if you do that, then your hide is not going to be very useful. And so it's a lot better if you hang the deer, you slit up the front legs, up the back legs, cut around at the hocks, or you can just remove the hocks and then you hang the deer and you might start taking the skin off with your knife, but after you start, you wanna pull it off. Because if you pull it off, then you're not gonna have knife marks gashing up your hide. Because those knife marks that are gashing up your hide are going to become holes. Like even if they just start as like really thin little marks on the inside of the hide, as you're taking a hide through the tanning process, which is really, intense, those little tiny gash marks can open up into big slits and big holes, and then you have a whole, a holy hide. Now, if you are not the one who is killing the deer that you're gonna tan the hide of, you might be getting it from a friend, or you might be putting a barrel out. Like oftentimes, especially people who live in big hunting areas, will put a barrel out four hides outside of like a butcher shop or just in town. And then hunters are happy to put their hide in there rather than to throw it away. Because, you know, anyone who's hunting really wants to see all of the animal use. They might not have the energy to use it all themselves, but they would prefer that. So rather than throwing it away and it going, um, it going to the landfill or it just, you know, going to feed the soil somewhere, they would prefer most likely to give you the hide. But if you do that, you need to be careful that those hunters are pulling the hide off the deer. You don't want to mess with these like totally cut up hides because it's way more work for you for way less reward. So the third way to get a hide and the way I usually get a hide is to go to um, a game processor. So a game processor is going to be taking in dozens, if not hundreds of hides over the course of a hunting season. And so if you go to the game processor, you can likely get yourself like, you know, five or 10 hides and have a choice of different hides to work with. But it's really important that you go to somebody who pulls or primarily pulls the hides off of the deer rather than cuts the hides off of the deer. This is really easy at the place that I go to because they have um, a winch that actually removes the hides. It's a pretty slick setup. They put the deer onto a gambrel hook, they lift the deer up, they take the hide off, and then once the hide's off and it's gutted, then it goes on like a zip line into the butcher shop. Like, it's pretty amazing. But um, when you go to a game processor, make sure that they're pulling the hides off. And you might be able to give them a tip in order to encourage them to pull the hides off because it might take them a little more work to pull the hides off rather than cutting them off. And so that tip can be very encouraging. That tip might really save you a lot of work because then you're gonna have much nicer hides at the end of the process. So the fourth way to get hides is to pick up roadkill. So that's, you know, there's lots of deer on the side of the road and those deer can not only be a source of meat, but they can be a great place to get hides. And something that's cool about picking up road kills is almost all deer are going to have holes somewhere in the hide because how did the deer die? Whether it was a bow and arrow or a rifle, like the deer is going to have a hole and that hole represents the deer's death, which is how the deer is getting to you. And so if you get a roadkill deer, that roadkill, unless it has really bad road rash, is likely to not have any holes in it, which is pretty awesome. 
The next thing that you're gonna need is a really sharp knife. I like to use a sheath knife, and I'm a fan of knives that come from Sweden. There's this brand called Mora, and Mora knives are super sh easy to sharpen. They're really wonderful. Don't mess around with some dull pocket knife. Like, that's gonna make your life a lot more challenging. Get a sheath knife and keep it really sharp. When you get your hide from one of those four places, you might not be ready to flesh it right away. And if that's the situation, you can take that hide and you can roll it up, roll the edges in and then roll it up and put it in a bag and put it in the freezer. That's totally one option. You can take that hide and you can put salt on the flesh side of the hide. If you salt it, don't flesh it before you salt it. Put the salt on the flesh and put a lot of salt. Like you want to see all of the salt. You're going to be using somewhere between probably a cup and a quart of salt for a whole hide. And I tend to go with feed salt. Uh, you could use really fancy like Himalayan pink salt, but that would be kind of silly. And so I'll salt the hide. When you salt the hide, then you want to roll in like you know, pretend this hide was covered in flesh. You would roll in the edges and then you would roll it from one side and then you would roll it from the other side. And so that's gonna keep the edges from drying out. So if you, um, you can also take a hide and flesh it and then you can dry it and we're gonna see how to do that later but that's a totally valid way to store your hide. So you're gonna want a fleshing beam. You can have a pre-made fleshing beam or you can make a fleshing beam out of a section of PVC pipe. I'm gonna talk more about the details of that pipe later. You're gonna need a hole saw, a drill, and you're gonna need three and a half foot long sticks or two by twos that you're gonna make legs out of. You're gonna want a fleshing knife or you can make a fleshing knife out of a deer leg and a sharp knife. This really doesn't work as well. Or you can make a fleshing knife out of a new or used planer blade. You're gonna need a rock or a knife sharpener, duct tape, rags, and scissors. Several times in the class, you're gonna need P cord or parachute cord, probably 100 to 200 feet of it. And that'll come in useful for so many steps a five gallon bucket and or a plastic bin or a plastic trash can. A creek can come in handy, but it's totally optional. Rocks are very useful for weighing down your hide in various stages. If you wanna pause your hide at various points, it can be helpful to have a wall to tack to, like some sort of wooden outdoor wall, a hammer and nails, a vehicle that is parked in the sunlight can be helpful, as you will see. And plastic bags and a freezer can also be helpful. For ringing, you're gonna want two trees or two posts that are somewhere between five and 12 feet apart. And one pole that's three and a half to six inches diameter and measures about four feet longer than the distance between the posts or trees. A draw knife is an optional tool, but it's super helpful. A tool handle or a one and a half to two inch diameter, three foot long hardwood stick. For making a hide stake, you're gonna want a two to three and a half inch hardwood tree that is still rooted and you're gonna be cutting it down and a pruning saw or a chainsaw and some sort of knife, preferably a draw knife. Or you're gonna want seven two by four by eights and a metal dry scrape plate. A one to four gallon pot will be very helpful for making your brain solution, as will an immersion blender or an egg beater. One deer brain or one dozen eggs is gonna be necessary for tanning your hide, as well as one cup of olive oil. If you wanna sew up holes in your hide, you're gonna need a very sharp pair of scissors, like the kind that 
someone might have hidden in their sewing cabinet and don't let you use unless you ask really nicely. And number 12, sharp beading needles and beading thread or backstrap sinew, which is a pain in the butt to use. I really, I tried sewing with sinew a lot and I have realized that there's a reason why people usually use thread now because it's a pain in the butt. A pumice stone or an ulu can be really helpful for roughing up your hide and softening and abrading the membrane side. An eighth to a quarter inch cable with two appropriately sized cable clamps is going to be essential for cabling your hide when you're softening it. For setting up your cable, you're gonna need a tree with an accessible six and a half to 12 foot high branch and a root that corresponds like within some reasonable amount with the position of that branch. You could also use accessible ceiling rafters, ceiling joists or floor joists or some other creative cable solution. It's very helpful to have a chair or a picnic table in the sun or near a fire for softening. When you get to softening too, your fingernails really get in the way. And so it's great to have fingernail clippers or just start with short fingernails. A plastic grocery bag and a large Ziploc bag will be very handy when you put your hide on pause, as will a freezer, which can be really helpful for putting the hide into. Firewood is going to be essential for smoking your hide because you need to come up with coals. Preferably the firewood is dense hardwood like locust, oak, or hickory. You will need access to punky wood or funky dried herbs or white sage or fir boughs. You'll need a hatchet, a tarp, a denim skirt from the thrift store, or old jeans, or a piece of canvas, and access to sewing machine or a needle and thread. You'll need a stapler with staples or Elmer's glue. Hide glue is not nearly as good. You'll need clothespins, a cinder block or a big flat rock, a three foot long stick, strong clips, and something like a tree or a rafter to attach your hide hanger to. You'll need a hole in the ground or a metal bucket and a 3 8 inch drill bit and drill, the last being far superior. And finally, you will need strong or ready to be strong arms. For the bonus rounds, which are very exciting, you will need a finished buckskin, paper and or cardstock, like from folders, in order to make a pattern, paper scissors, sewing scissors, and then you'll also want a charcoal pencil or a ballpoint pen, school glue, a round pointed awl, and a soft block of wood, like something that would be a cutoff from a construction site. 